While sitting on your front porch one day, you see two cars coming down the road. Suddenly, the car in front stops. The car behind doesn't notice and hits them from behind. The two cars both slide forward as one until the wreckage slowly comes to a stop. What just happened? The cars had a collision, right? We all know that car crashes are collisions, but there are many other types of events that are also considered collisions in physics. For example, when you hit a baseball with a bat or kick a soccer ball, these are also collisions. What about if you run into your friend while you are both ice skating and you both slide across the ice together? Yes, this is also a collision. Whenever two or more objects hit each other in this way, then you have a collision. You can classify collisions into one of two types depending on what happens to the objects immediately after the collision. 1. If the collision is elastic, then the colliding objects stick together after the collision. The car crash you witnessed and the collision you had with your friend while ice skating would both be inelastic collisions. In contrast, if the colliding objects bounce off each other and do not stick together, then the collision is considered to be elastic. Hitting a baseball or kicking a soccer ball are examples of elastic collisions. Let's look more closely at what happens in an inelastic collision. When the two cars hit each other after the collision, they move together more slowly than the one car was moving beforehand. Therefore, the system has less kinetic energy after the collision than before. What happens to the energy? Does it disappear? No. Remember that you cannot create or destroy energy, but it can change forms. When the cars collided, there was likely some damage to each car. If you were to put your hand on the site of damage, it would be warm, maybe even hot. Some of the kinetic energy of the system was turned into thermal energy. So even though the total energy of the system was conserved, kinetic energy was not. What was conserved in this collision then? The physical quantity that is always conserved in collisions is momentum. Momentum is equal to the mass of the object multiplied by its velocity. In any collision, whether it is elastic or inelastic, the total momentum of the system before the collision must be equal to the total momentum of the collision after the collision. Since inelastic collisions involve objects that stick together after the collision, we say that the objects have a common final velocity. They are no longer two separate objects, but have merged into one larger object. Let's revisit the car crash you witnessed again and see what we can learn about it using conservation of momentum. Say the car in back had a mass of 1,800 kilograms and was moving at 18 meters per second originally. The car in front had a mass of 1,500 kilograms and was stopped. How fast were the two cars moving immediately after the collision? This is a great example of an inelastic collision because the cars are moving together after the collision. Therefore, they have a common final velocity. Just like in all collisions, the total momentum of both cars together must be the same before and after the collision. You can then solve for the final common velocity of both cars. 1,500 kilograms times 0 meters per second plus 1,800 kilograms times 18 meters per second equals 1,500 kilograms plus 1,800 kilograms times VF. 0 plus 32,400 kilogram meters per second equals 3,300 kilograms times VF. 32,400 kilogram meters per second over 3,300 kilograms equals 3,300 kilograms times VF over 3,300 kilograms. 9.82 meters per second equals VF. Would this be different if both cars were moving? Let's look at an example and find out. Sarah is ice skating and moving with a speed of 4 meters per second when she runs into her friend Joe, who is moving directly toward her at 2 meters per second. They hit each other and slide off together, still hanging on to each other. If Sarah has a mass of 60 kilograms and Joe has a mass of 80 kilograms, with what speed do they move after they collide with each other? You have to be careful here because Sarah and Joe are moving in opposite directions. If we define the positive direction as the direction that Sarah is moving, then Joe has a velocity of negative 2 meters per second and Sarah has a velocity of positive 4 meters per second. Knowing this, you can use conservation of momentum to solve for the final velocity of both Sarah and Joe. 60 kilograms times 4 meters per second plus 80 kilograms times negative 2 meters per second equals 60 kilograms plus 80 kilograms times VF. 
240 kilogram meters per second minus 160 kilogram meters per second equals 140 kilograms times VF. 80 kilogram meters per second equals 140 kilograms times VF. 80 kilogram meters per second over 140 kilograms equals 140 kilograms times VF over 140 kilograms. 0.57 meters per second equals